Welcome to worship on the sixth Sunday after Epiphany, February 12th, 2023. As it is the season after Epiphany, the pyramids in our church are green, which means that pretty much every church across the country has green pyramids out today, even in Kansas City. Um, <laughs> You can make of that whatever you will. Um, some announcements before we begin. Uh, a few names have been added to the prayer list since it was printed. Those names are Virgil and the family and friends of Randy Ott. Today we celebrate the holy baptism of Aiden and Riley Miller. Welcome Aiden and Riley. We are glad you'll be joining our fellowship today. Ash Wednesday is coming up in 10 days on February 22nd. We will have worship at 10.30 a.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. that day. There will be a free luncheon following the 10.30 service. If you're interested in attending the luncheon, please sign up today in the Narthex if you haven't yet. Now, it's no secret that our attendance has dropped significantly from what it was before the pandemic. This has happened to most congregations. But I think now is a, a good time for us to try together to address that. So I would like all of you who are members of Prince of Peace to think of someone that you used to see in worship but haven't seen in a while and reach out to them and invite them to come with you to Ash Wednesday. Um, the worst that can happen is they say no. So if we do this together, we might just make a difference. Also, speaking of the pandemic, there will be a special service on Sunday, March 12th at 4 o'clock p.m. The service is called The Darkness May Linger, But Hope Abides. At that service, we will lament all the things that we have lost during the COVID pandemic, the lives that were lost, the isolation, the effects on our children's education, the mental health struggles, and so forth. But it won't just be about sadness. We will also grab hold of the hope that God has provided throughout this time, and it still provides today. It will be an honest yet hopeful celebration of God's steadfast love. And we will have a light supper following it. Uh, this is a service designed for you and for the whole community. Um, so please spread the word. Uh, Connie will be out in the narthex after worship with some flyers about this service. I invite you to take one um, and either share it with a friend or post it somewhere in the community. There are also Lenten devotional books uh, available in the Narthex counter. Those are called Water and Spirit. Uh, and please feel free to pick one up whenever you like. Um, for those of you who are watching online right now, if you cannot come to the church and get one, let me know and I will get one delivered to you. The Hobby Fair is coming up in two weeks. Uh, make sure to sign up by next Sunday in order to have a table for your hobby and or to enter your barbecue in the competition. And finally, um, someone lost something in the women's room this morning. Uh, if you can identify what that is, you can see Connie and she can get that back to you. Connie, can you wave your hand? Um, so if you lost something in the ladies' room, let Connie know. If there are no other announcements I neglected to make, then the time has come to worship the Lord. Let us quiet our voices and our hearts as we begin our worship.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who hope in you, because we are weak mortals, we accomplish nothing good without you. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do, and give us grace and power to do them, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for story time. Don't sit down. I'm just going to make you stand up in a moment anyway. Hi. All right. Got one more coming up. So instead of telling you a story today, I want to show you something. So come on over here. Anybody know what this is? What is it? This is to baptize people. That's right. Does anybody know what it's called? The baptismal fountain. The baptismal fountain. That's really close. 
really close. It's baptismal font is what we call this. Yeah. So this is um, a special pedestal, and on top of it, what do we have in here? Take a look. What's in here? Water. Can anyone feel the water? You don't have to. There's wa it's, it's water in here. What are we going to use with this? What are we going to do with this water? We're going to use it to anoint babies. You know the word anoint? Yeah. And there they are right there. We're going to pour that water on their heads in a little bit. So do you know where this water came from? Where? A river. Good guess. A well. A well. Good guess. Anybody any other guesses? This water came from the kitchen sink. Yeah, but the water from the, that's in the kitchen sink came from a well. You're right, it came from a well before that. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I live with this thing. And I guess, Dad, I'm getting what I deserve, too. So. So it's just normal, everyday water. But something very special happens during baptism because the Holy Spirit has promised to be here with, it, with us. So, so let's take a look at this. What's this? Candle. It's a candle. It's big. It's big, yeah, yeah. Um, this is called the Paschal candle, or sometimes the Christ candle. And this candle gets lit on certain days, including when we have a baptism. This candle symbolizes Jesus. Why do you think a candle might symbolize Jesus? Because Jesus is the light of the world. So after this, the baptism today, the assisting minister is going to light this candle and this candle from that one and give them to, to Aidan and Riley, who are being baptized today, to show that Christ's light is with them too. Yeah. So, come here. Over here. There's some other stuff over here I want you to see. You know what this is? A cup. A cup? What do you think? A maybe? This has a funny church word called ewer. Can you see what's in there? What do you think's in there? Water. Water. Yeah, because right now, there's a little water in the font, but we want a lot more water than that for the baptism. So... During, right before the baptism, the assistant minister is going to pour this water into the font. And you, you can watch that. And, um, and she, it might splash a little bit, and that's okay. Um, so we pour the water in there. And uh, in here, there's a little bit of something. Can you see what's on that little dish there? Water. <laughs> oil is right. This is oil. This is a little bit of olive oil. And what we do with that is um, Aiden and Riley's parents are going to dip their finger in that oil and make the sign of the cross on their forehead while I say, child of God, you have been marked with the cross of Christ and blessed with the Holy Spirit forever. Because it means that now they belong to God. You know who else belongs to God? Us. You, 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 Jesus, yeah, we all do. Um, what's this, do you think? A napkin, a towel, you know what this is for? For babies, yeah, because their head's going to be wet. You can wipe their head down with it. And we have a special banner up there. What's on that banner? Yeah. Yeah. What's on this banner? What does this say? Can somebody read this banner to me? Holy baptism of Riley and Aiden. And what's this a, a picture of? What do you think? That, that's a good guess. It's actually a picture of that, of the baptismal font. That's baptismal font. And this is a shell. Because we're, I, what I didn't show you is there's a shell on the table. That's what I'm going to use to pour the water on their head. And what's this? A dove. A dove? What do the rest of you think? A dove? It is a dove. It, and, that, and that's because in, in the Bible there's a story where a dove comes down from heaven at Jesus' baptism. And so we, 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 uh, we put a dove as a symbol here to show that the Holy Spirit's coming down to Riley and Aiden too today. So... Baptisms are pretty neat, aren't they? Yeah. So I hope you can, you can uh, watch and see what's going on during it today. Um, let's bow our heads for a prayer. Dear God, thank you for baptism. Please bless us all with this holy water. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats. Thanks so much.
A reading from Deuteronomy. The Lord sets before the people of God a clear choice. Life and prosperity will come to the faithful. Loss of the land will be the consequence of disobedience. Choosing life entails loving and holding fast to God. Life in God's presence presupposes the promise made to the ancestors. Moses said to the people, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in the Lord's ways, and by observing God's commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other deities and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying the Lord and holding fast to your God. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Psalm 119. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who follow the teaching of the Lord. Happy are they who observe your decrees and seek you with all their hearts. Who never do any wrong, but always walk in your ways. You laid down your commandments, that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statues. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with a true heart when I have learned your righteousness judgments. I will keep your statues. Do not utterly forsake me. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Human leaders in the church are not the ones who control ministry. Rather, they are co-workers who belong to God, the one who truly controls and continuously empowers the ministry of the church. Brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For one says, I belong to Paul. Another says, I belong to Apollos. Are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, You've heard that it was said to those in ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you'll be liable to the council. And if you say, You fool, you'll be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your sister or brother has something against you, leave your gift there and go. First be reconciled to your sister or brother, and then come and offer your gift. Again, you have heard it said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. 
But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the footstool of God, or by the earth, for it is, heaven is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is God's footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great sovereign. And do not swear by your own head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Aiden. Where's where's the other one? She is a cheated diaper. <laughs> That's important. Well, I'm going to talk to you, Aiden, for a little bit, but I want you to repeat everything I said to Riley when you see her again, okay? I'm so glad that you two are here today. I'm so glad that your parents have brought you here. I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to pour water on your heads this morning and to proclaim that you are baptized. I'm so glad that you are receiving that amazing gift of God today. Now, Aiden, you and your sister are just eight months old. So you're probably a little confused by what's happening here. What's all this singing about? What are all these people talking about? And all these strange words and banners everywhere. Well, keep coming to worship, kids. Over time, you'll get used to it. And over time, you may find such meaning and depth in these ancient rituals, these ancient rhythms of worship that were created by people who came before us and to which we have also now added our own particular cadence. Well, anyway, this is the part of the sermon called, or the part of the service called nap time. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. This is, this is called the sermon. It comes after the readings from the Bible, and I talk about one or more of those readings and try and connect them with our lives today, try to make those readings come alive in our hearts. So today I'm looking at the second reading from 1 Corinthians, and in particular one verse. Verse 6 reads like this. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So Aiden, I need to give you a little background so you can understand that verse. Paul, who wrote this letter, was a great teacher and preacher. And he started a lot of churches. And one of the churches he started was in the city of Corinth. Well, Paul left there eventually to go start another church somewhere else. And then another teacher named Apollos arrived, and he helped the church in Corinth for a while. Well, then he left. Well, years later, Paul heard that the church in Corinth was having a problem. The problem was that some... Yeah, I know. The problem was that some people said, well, I was taught by Paul. And others said, well, I was taught by Apollos. And some people were saying, this is Paul's church. Other people were saying, this is Apollos' church. And things like that. They were dividing into groups. And each group thought they were better than the other one. It would be like if some people in your family said, well, I like Aiden better. And others said, well, I like Riley better. That wouldn't be very good for your family, would it? And it wasn't very good for the church in Corinth either. So Paul wrote a letter to them to remind them that they were all one church. And to remind them that neither he nor Apollos were really what that church was about. Now, Paul and Apollos did important work, but the one who was really important, the one who would hold them all together as one church, was God. That's why he wrote, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. Welcome back. And I think that that's a really important sentence, and I want you two to learn that sentence. And maybe if everybody says it with me, you'll learn it better. Can everybody say this sentence with me? I, I'll say it first. I planted... Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. There's a rhythm to those words, isn't there? And I think there's a rhythm to what those words mean. Aiden and Riley, let me give you some examples of how this rhythm works. This church, this group of people that you're becoming part of today, we are here because of that rhythm. A little over 50 years ago, some people worked really hard to get this congregation started. And then some other people did some work to keep it going. And right now, the people in this room are working hard to keep it going for the next generation. And God has been there through the whole process, guiding and leading us, challenging and comforting us. Everybody together, I planted, 
Apollo swattered, but God gave the growth. Here's another example of that rhythm. Our church has an endowment fund, which is kind of like a pot of money. But this money gets used in a very specific way. When people donate to the endowment fund, we don't use that money right away. We save it. And over time, it grows even bigger. And we use a portion of that money each year to do some important things. Our endowment fund began a few decades ago with one big gift. And just last year, some of our leaders made some changes to make it have even more of an effect. And every time someone donates to it, it grows, making it even more ministries possible. And all through that, God has been giving us faith to make these donations, faith that the church of the future will use them well. I planted, Apollo swattered, but God gave the growth. Enough about Prince of Peace. How about you two, Riley and Aiden? You know where you came from? Your parents. In a way, they made you. And your grandparents made them. And their parents made them, and their parents made them, and so on and so forth. And through all of the generations, God was breathing life into each one, and now into the two of you. I planted, Apollo swattered, but God gave the growth. Or how about this one, your future. Your parents brought you here today to be baptized. And I bet your parents do a whole lot of other things for you as well. And as you get older, other people will do things for you too. Teachers, doctors, friends, perhaps coaches, mentors. So many people will help you grow and learn and thrive. And through all of it, God will be with you. I planted, Apollo swattered, but God gave the growth. This rhythm is everywhere, Aiden and Riley. Heck, even this sermon is an example of this rhythm. About 2,000 years ago, Paul wrote that letter to the Corinthians. Hundreds of years later, someone translated that letter into English. Some people wrote commentaries about it. I read those commentaries. And then I wrote this sermon. And all along the way, every one of us were inspired by God's Holy Spirit. I planted, Apollo swattered, but God gave the growth. This is the rhythm of God. The whole world is built on this rhythm. And the rhythm goes something like this. Someone plants, someone else waters, and God gives the growth. And that means a couple of really important things for us. It means that we all have a role to play, every one of us, including the two of you. You are going to have the chance to plant, and you are going to have the chance to water, and God is going to call you to do just that. And it also means that you are never alone in this, because God is the one who does the growing. God is the one who breathes life into everything we do, who shines light into every confusing and painful moment, who gives us hope even when things look bleak. And it means that life is a dance, and the Holy Spirit of God sets the rhythm. The rest of your life will be lived to that rhythm, Riley and Aiden, and today, God starts the beat. You know how some songs start with a count-off? The singer or maybe the drummer will count one, two, three, four, and then they start? I think maybe baptism is kind of like that. Baptism is the count-off to a life of faith. But it's more of a waltz because the count goes one, two, three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One, two, three. When you are baptized in just a few minutes, that's God saying one, two, three. Three, And then the song will begin. And that song will last your entire life. It's a song that we're all caught up in. The song we're all dancing to. A song that will never, ever end. I'm so glad that you're both joining the song today. Amen.
In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. I invite the sponsors, godparents, to now present the candidates. I present Thank you. Parents, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your children baptized into Christ? As you bring your children to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that they may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Riley and Aidan grow in the Christian faith and life? Amen. And sponsors, do you promise to nurture Riley and Aidan in the Christian faith as you're empowered by God's Spirit, and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Amen. People of God, do you promise to support Aidan and Riley and pray for them in their new life in Christ? I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. To the parents and sponsors, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? And with the whole assembly, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord, inspire your church, including St. John in effort and the pastoral care providers, so that it might be a sign of life throughout the world. Let all find abundant life in your ways. Merciful God. Lord, nourish your creation. Bless all who plant and water. Bless the work of farmers who toil through drought, flooding, and climate change. Guide the work of agriculture scientists toward sustainable way to feed the world. Merciful God. <clears throat> Lord, empower peacemakers with your spirit. Where death holds sway through violence, disease, suffering, and hunger, equip relief workers to bring hope. Nurture and bring comfort to all who are ill, in pain, suffering physically or mentally, including Virgil, Virgil. Kristen, Kristen, Joe, Joe. Pete, Pete, Brandon, Brandon. Derek, Derek. Derek. Jane, Jane, Emily, Emily. John, John, Pete, Pete. Joan, Joan, Marlene, Marlene. Phyllis, Phyllis, Elwood, Elwood. Family and friends of Randy, Randy. Maureen, Maureen, Helen, Helen. Anne, Anne, Harold, Harold. Merciful God. Lord, bless Aidan and Riley Miller as they are baptized this morning. Pour your Holy Spirit upon them and let all embrace them lovingly as your children and help us teach them your ways throughout their lives. Merciful God. Lord, we wish the following and happy and healthy birthday this week to Brenda Hughes, Kathy Steinmetz, Victoria Polifkowitz, Shirley Krauss, 
Alan Manick, and Linda Kessler. May the joy of their special day last through the year. Merciful God. Lord, encourage our congregation. Call us to a common purpose, your purpose. Let us think and act as one family. Keep us from quarreling. Turn our hearts towards you and guide our leaders so that our choices may be life-giving for all. Merciful God. Lord, we offer up gratitude this week for all the animals, fish, and birds that you have gifted us with. So many species, let us care for them so none suffer at our hand or become extinct. Merciful God. We bring you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting in your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel into slavery from freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay. All right. You ready? Who's first? Riley first. Okay, so just put her head over the water here. Oh, it's going to wake her up. Yep. It's okay. It's okay. Riley Rose, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh. Your turn, Aiden. Aiden Frederick. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just keep them up, just come a step closer. Great, that's perfect. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Riley Rose with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Sustain Aidan Frederick with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. I'm the, what's wrong with my hands? All right, I'll hold them above you. The spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay. okay. Aidan Frederick, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Yep, just use your finger there. Riley Rose, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You can turn and face the congregation. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. 
Please share a sign of that peace with one another and especially with our newest members, Riley and Aiden. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, 
with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. one we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table renew our strength to do justice love kindness and journey humbly with you amen amen i invite the lay eucharist visitors to stand if you are here gracious god loving all your family with a mother's tender care as you sent the angel to feed elijah with heavenly bread Assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick and homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament. And give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of, our, of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now you may all stand for the final hymn.
the God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. Follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God.